Hello guys and welcome back to the archives. I see you have awoken from your slumber. Good. Our new lecture is about to begin and we are going to be compiling all of our lore videos revolving around one Darth Plagueis the Wise, one of the most formidable, indomitable, and one of the most greatest lightsaber duels to ever have existed. A master of the lightsaber and of the force, Plagueis the Wise was a force to be reckoned with. So my friends, grab a snack and listen to this hour plus long video of Darth Plagueis the Wise. No, not Darth Plagueis the Wise. Prepare to listen to the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Greetings friends and welcome back to the archives. I have been expecting you. Darth Plagueis the Wise is one of, if not the undisputed, most intelligent, most tactical, most powerful, and unquestionably one of the most powerful Sith Lords in all of Star Wars lore. Darth Plagueis' in-depth studies into the middle Chlorians made him a nigh-unstoppable foe, rivaling beings such as Mace Windu, Grandmaster Yoda, and even some have speculated the Prodigal Knight Revan, a being whose power surpassed even the mightiest of the ancient Sith. Despite this though, Darth Plagueis still died, and in the Darth Plagueis novel, we can clearly illustrate how Darth Plagueis was actually killed and murdered by his sneaky apprentice. Palpatine used tactical genius and strategy in order to defeat his master, playing on his previous quotes, using his eidetic memory and his immense strategic output in order to be able to defeat his master without initiating any formal combat. And it is personally this reason why I personally believe Palpatine's plan that ended up killing Plagueis eventually worked so well. So today, we're going to be exploring a possible idea. And that possible idea being how Darth Plagueis was actually killed and how Darth Plagueis may still live on as a force ghost, a drifting, lingering essence today. The excerpt picks up from the Darth Plagueis novel. Darth Plagueis has just drunk a huge amount of Solaston wine, extremely expensive wine, celebrating Palpatine's ascent into Chancellorship, with Palpatine musing that he would kill the Mon Sith Lord before he ever achieved galactic power. Now, let us proceed. A look of sinister purpose contorted Sidious's face. Again, his eyes darted around the room, and the dark side whispered, Your election assured, the sun guard's absent, Plagueis unsuspecting, and asleep. He moved in a blur. Crackling from his fingertips, a web of blue lightning ground itself on the mum's dreaming device. Plagueis' eyes snapped open, the force gathering him like a storm. But he should have stopped short of defending himself. This being who had survived assassinations and killed countless opponents merely gazed at Sidious until he struck him. Plagueis was challenging him, confident that he couldn't be killed, and in denial he was slowly suffocating. He might have been simply experimenting with himself, actually courting death to put it in its place. Momentarily taken aback, Sidious stood absolutely still. Was Plagueis so self-deluded as to believe he had actually achieved immortality? The question lingered for only a moment, then Sidious unleashed another tangle of lightning drawing more deeply on the dark side than he ever had. Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we? He said, smoothing his tersed cloak, you useless old fool. With a snarl, he threw his cloak back behind his shoulders and leaned towards Plagueis, planting his palms on the low table that was now puddled with spilled wine. It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis, who came to Naboo, determined to suck the pl planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Higo Damascus Plagueis, who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man and with meticulous skill manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide, fratricide. Darth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge but withholding his most powerful secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as a means of controlling him, instilling in him a sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the dark side. Sidious stood to his full height, glaring. It was Plagueis who criticised his early efforts of his apprentice, and who once choked him in a demonstration of his superiority. Plagueis, who denigrated him in a private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kim, and yet who allowed himself to be tracked by the Grand and nearly killed by mercenaries. Plagueis, who had turned away from the Grand Plan to focus entirely on himself in an egotistical quest for immortality. Plagueis, who had the terminity to criticise his apprentice for having incalculated too much pride in his assassin he had trained. Plagueis, who had then turned his equally powerful apprentice into a messenger and a mere intermediary, 
and Plagueis, who watched it in secret while the apprentice tasked a true intermediary to reveal the reborn Sith to the galaxy. Sidious paused, then in Derdishian, Plagueis the Wise, who in his time truly was, except at the end, trusting that the ruler two had been suspended, and failed to realise that the most powerful Sith Lord the galaxy had ever known, and yet he forgot to leave a place for himself, whose pride never allowed him to question that he would no longer be needed. Still struggling for breath, Plagueis managed to stand, not only to collapse back on the couch, knocking over a statue from its perch, Sidious moved in, his hands upraised to deliver another bolt, his expression archaic, enough to chill the room. A full storm gathered over the couch, spreading out in all concentric rings, to wash over Sidious and hurl objects to all corners. In the centre of it, Plagueis' form began anthropomorphic, then resumed shape as the storm began to wane. Sidious's eyes bored into the months. How often you said that that old order of Bane had ended with the death of your master. An apprentice no longer needs to be stronger, you told me, merely more clever. The era of keeping score, suspicion, and betrayal was over. Strength is not in flesh, but in the force. He laughed. You lost the game on the very first day you chose to train me, to rule by your side, or better still, under your thumb. Teacher, yes, and for that I will be eternally grateful. But master, never. So he has peered at Plagueis through the force. Oh yes, by all means, gather your midichlorians, Plagueis. He held his thumb and forefinger close together. Try to keep yourself alive while I choke all the life out of you. Plagueis got for air and lifted his arm toward him. There's the rub, you see. All the ones you experimented on, you killed, and brought back to life, they were little more than toys. Now you get to experience it from their side, and look what you discover, in a body that has been denied air, in which even the force is failing. Your own midichlorians can't accomplish what you're asking of them. Hatred stained Sidious' eyes. I could save you, of course, return you from the brink of death as you did Venomous. I could retask your body to repair the damage already done to your lungs, your heart, your aged brain, but I'll do no such thing. The idea here is not to drag you back at the last moment, but to bring you on death's door and shove you through to the other side. To your side. A tragedy, really, for one so wise, one who could oversee the lives and deaths of all beings, except himself. The moon's eyes began to bulge, his pale flesh too sonatic. You may be wondering, when did he begin to change? The truth is, is that I haven't changed, as we have clouded the minds of the Jedi. I clouded yours. Never once did I have any intention of sharing power with you. I needed to learn from you, no more, no less, to learn all your secrets, which I trusted you would eventually reveal. But what made you think that you would be need you after that? Vanity, perhaps? Your sense of self-importance? You've been nothing more than a pawn in a game played by a genuine master, the Sith Ari. A cruel laugh escaped him. Reflect back on the past few years. Assuming you have the capacity, Yingchor, Dovala, Eriadu, Maul, the Nemoidians, Naboo, an army of clones, the fallen Jedi Dooku, you think those were your ideas, when in fact they were mine, cleverly suggested to you so that you could feed them back to me. You were far too trusting, Plagueis. No true Sith can ever really care about another. That has always been known. There is no way but my way. Sidious' eyes narrowed. Are you still with me, Plagueis? Yes, I detect that you are, though barely. A few final words then. I could have let you die in the Forbisi district, but I couldn't allow that to happen when there was still so much I didn't know. So many powers that remained outside my reach. And as it happened, I acted wisely in rescuing you. Otherwise, how could I be standing here and you be dying? I actually thought that you would die off on sojourn, and you would have had if the hut hadn't tipped you up to Varun's scheme. And you, well, you also turned out for the best. Even after all you taught me, I want I have been able to take the final steps to chancellorship without your help in manipulating the Senate and bringing the into play with various and sundry allies. If it's any consolation, I'm being honest when I say that I could not have succeeded without you. But now that we've won the race, I have no need for a co-chancellor. Your presence, much less your unnecessary counsel, would only confuse matters. I have more to do with the risk of discovery might not allow me to do. While well, I execute the rest of the grand plan, growing an army, fomenting rebellion, and fabricating intergalactic war, quarrelling the Jedi and catching them unawares. Rest easy in your grave, Plagueis. In the end, I will be proclaimed Emperor. The Sith will have their revenge, and, and I will rule the galaxy. Plagueis slid to the floor and rolled face down. Death rattled his lungs, and he died. One worn 4D started to approach, but Sidious motioned for it to stop. We're going to have to find you a new home and a new body droid. 114D looked once at the Mon, then at Sidious. Yes, Master Palpatine. Sidious moved to the window, then turned outside to take a close look at Plagueis. Then after a long moment, he returned to the window and pulled the drapes aside. 
His spirit soared, but briefly. Something was shading his sense of triumph. A vague awareness of a power greater than himself. Was it Plagueis reaching out from the far side of Vex to vex him? Or was it the feeling as a mere consequence of apotheosis? Outside the summits of the tallest buildings were gilded by the first rays of daylight. What an end to this character. Darth Plagueis the Wise is truly one of the most mysterious characters in all of Star Wars lore. But we still haven't gotten to the primary part of the video. Why did Darth Plagueis, in my mind, allow Palpatine to kill him? Personally, it goes back to the line where Plagueis was challenging Palpatine. He was cocky, arrogant. He believed that he had learned all he needed to know about the midichlorians and that he could live eternally. He believed that he could not die. He believed that he was an immortal entity, a virgin in the force like Palpatine. While he could never be as strong as his apprentice, as strong as he could be, he could still be formidable, but in the end, Palpatine would always rise up. Personally, in Star Wars canon analysis, I believe that Plagueis is still around. I believe his spirit is still imprinted on the galaxy, just waiting to find a clone body. Personally, if Plagueis was to return, I would really like if they incorporated the Exegol storyline from The Rise of Skywalker. I know The Rise of Skywalker is very controversial, but the Exegol storyline is truly one of my favourite elements of the entirety of the Skywalker saga. I would personally love it if all this time the Sith Eternal cultures had actually been f crafting a body for Plagueis, and not for Palpatine, with Palpatine just inhabiting the body, and then since his immense dark side connection, decided to go along with the ruse that they had. With Plagueis being denied a body, Plagueis is now dead, but his spirit still lives on. Or at least in my opinion. Well my friends, what did you think of this video? Are you enjoying these types of videos that we are doing on the Mon Sith Lord Darth Plagueis? Goodbye my friends, this is where we part ways. I'll see you in the galaxy far, far away. And if we've learned one lesson here, is that never drink Sullustan wine before the night of the election of the Supreme Chancellor. Greetings friends, acolytes, mons, and officials of the intergalactic banking clan, and welcome back to our archives. I have been expecting you. Today we are truly going to take a turn as we are going to immerse ourselves fully in the historic and terrifying experiments of Darth Plagueis the Wise, one of the few people in all of history that Palpatine himself genuinely feared and one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all of history, surpassing Darth Malgus, Darth Nox, and even the mightiest of the ancient Sith Lords such as Exar Kun, Frida Nad, and Naga Sadao. Darth Plagueis was exceptionally skilled. He delved so deep into the Force of Secrets, he was able to learn how to manipulate midichlorians, the building blocks of the living force that allowed him to tap even into the cosmic force, an intergalactic and expansive energy field that almost no Force sensitive ever had an attunement to match. Darth Plagueis was a tribute to some terrifying and tyrannical experiments, the following of which I think we must note. So my friends, join us as we journey to the intergalactic banking clan and add a new addition to our archives and discover the true, most terrifying experiments of Darth Plagueis the Wise. The following monologue I am going to recount from The Secrets of the Sith novel, which states a numerous amount of novels including from Darth Plagueis, Source of Sin, Emperor Palpatine, and Darth Malgus. My experiments proved midichlorians could be controlled. If this is true, then they could not also be induced to create life on a monocellular level. Midichlorians in the cells of a mother could, in theory, be persuaded to craft a zygote. For consistency in my test subjects, I obtained hundreds of identical humanoids each with a consistent midichlorian level. After much experimentation, I succeeded in prodding midichlorians to replicate themselves through a sexual fission. Though in most cases, this process increased their numbers uncontrollably and killed the host. But I believe by using this method, I could trick the midichlorians into creating a zygote. Then it would simply be a matter of growing the subject under normal biological conditions. Such a subject could, of course, take years to hit the developmental milestones of a typical humanoid but he could have a midichlorian count as high as 20,000 per cell. 
That is more than any Jedi or Sith in recorded history, although our entire theory theoretical. Such an achievement is intriguing. That is just one, if you think that is bad. You have absolutely nothing. You know nothing you were about to see. The true wrath of Darth Plagueis. While Darth Plagueis was considering the fact he could fertilize a female's eggs within their body without the use of sexual intercourse, meaning he was capable of technically creating life, in recorded in his chapter The Science of Creating Life in Star Wars The Book of the Sith. That is nothing compared to the following two we are going to immerse ourselves in. This is a monologue from the Darth Plagueis novel. This Darth Plagueis novel is a lot of pages, roughly 900 pages on an e-reader, and 500 normally. This Darth Plagueis novel is personally my favourite novel in all of Star Wars history, and truly delves into Darth Plagueis' primary portion of his life, from murdering his own master in Tenebris, to his own death at the hands of his treachery of Sheev Palpatine. Let's immerse ourselves in the knowledge of the Darth Plagueis pages. Deeper in the complex, they move past cages containing as many creatures as could be found in a well-stocked zoo. 114D indicated a cluster separate from the rest. These are the Magister's most recent pregnancies. The Magister's? Sidious repeated in bewilderment. His success, his success rate has improved. Sidious was still trying to make sense of the droid's statements when they entered a long corridor lined with windowless cells. Through the force he could sense life forms behind each door. Captives? Oh no, sir, 1140 said. Ongoing experiments. This technically means Plagueis was able to create pregnancies. He was able to fertilize a female's egg. And technically, even if it was only marginally at the start, he was able to create life itself and funnel midichlorians, siphoning of stronger force sensitivity into every single being that he can. However, this is by far not even close to the most brutal execution torture, and method that Darth Plagueis the Wise used on his terrible experiments. The Bith, Venomous, dispatched by Tenebris to test me, to eliminate me had I failed, but Tene Venomous had been a gift, essential in helping me unlock some of the deepest secrets of the Force. Every creature you have glimpsed or sensed here has been a similar blessing, as you will see when I lead you into the mysteries. What did the droid mean when it said the magic's pregnancies? Beneath the breath mask, fake Plagueis might have quirked a smile. It means that the pregnancies were not achieved by normal means of conception, but rather through the force. This means Darth Plagueis was able to manipulate the midichlorians within a living being, very similar to how Darth Nihilus used Sever Force, killing the midichlorians inside his own master, Darth Treya, in the Sith Triumvirate over three millennia before Plagueis' birth, meaning that Plagueis was able to conceive children through the force and manipulated the Force in such a way that he was able to create life within women without them even knowing until it was too late. He would be able to replicate this on other species, as shown in the further events of the Darth Plagueis novel. But there is one more brutal execution method and experiment we have to immerse ourselves in. Darth Venomous, the secret apprentice of Tenebris, dispatched to kill Plagueis. The following monologues come from Darth Plagueis' novel. On the same day, they had allowed Venomous to die. Then, by manipulating the Bith's midichlorians, which should have been inert and unresponsive, Plagueis had resurrected him. The enormity of the event had stunned Sidious into silence and overwhelmed and addled 114D's processes. But Plagueis had carried on without assistance, again and again, following and allowing Venomous to die and be returned to life until the Bith's organs had given out and Plagueis finally granted him everlasting death. Plagueis focused his attention on the vat in front of him where the remains of the Bith Sith Lord Darth Venomous floated in a semi-transparent bathe of preserving fluid. Venomous's corpse was still animated and twitching spasmodically with the last dregs of life that Plagueis had invested in it, only to snatch it away again. He had been working for almost 20 uninterrupted hours on this particular project with limited success, and the notification from his droid signified a welcome diversion. Let me explain what is happening to you. Plagueis said, the cells that make up all living beings contain within them organelles, known as midichlorians. They are in addition to being the basis for life, the elements that enable beings like me and you to perceive and use the force. As a result of a lifetime of study, I have learned how to manipulate midichlorians, and I have instructed the limited number you possess to return to their source, in plain basic Verona, I am killing you. 
Verano's face was losing colour. His breathing had slowed. Bring me back. I can still be of service to you. But you are your majesty. A celebrated ancient poet once said that every death lessened him, for he considered himself to be a brother to every living being. I, on the other hand, have come to understand that every death I oversee nourishes and empowers me, for I am a true Sith. No, better than an Azati. The brain eaters? What does better mean to those who have us who have passed beyond notions of good and evil? Are you better than Bon Tapolo? Are you better than Queen Padme Amidala? I am only fit to answer the question. Better are those who do my bidding. Plagueis placed his hand atop Verona's. I'll remain with you for a while as you meld with the Force, but at some point I'll have to leave you at the threshold to continue on your own. Don't do this, Damask. Please. I am Darth Plagueis, Verona, your shepherd. As the life left Verona's body, the path he and Plagueis followed wound deeper into the darkness and absence. Then Plagueis stopped, overcome by a sudden sense that he had already seen and travelled this path. Had he, he wondered as Verona breathed his last, or had the Force afforded him a glimpse of the future. All the ones you experimented on, killed and brought back to life, they were little more than toys. This was the true, brutal execution method of Darth Plagueis. He was able to kill his enemies by literally murdering the midichlorians. Then by manipulating these midichlorians further, he was able to resurrection until their organs physically gave out. And even then, as shown with the best Sith Lord Venomous, he was still able to find use for their mummified remains. But even this is not the end. As we delve into our final experiment, how Darth Plagueis was able to successfully reverse aging. The following three monologues all come from the Darth Plagueis novel that is set in 32 BBY, or at least the part that these all come from. Now my friends, let us proceed. But having gained the power to keep another alive hadn't been enough for him, and so after Sidious had returned to Coruscant, he had ultimately devoted himself to internalising that ability by manipulating the midichlorians that animated him. For several months he made no progress, but ultimately he began to perceive a measured change. The scars that had grown over his wounds had abruptly began to soften and fade, and he began to breathe more freely than he had in 20 years. He began to see that he had sense that he, that were not the only damaged tissues healing, but his entire body was rejuvenating itself. Beneath the transpirator, areas of flesh were smooth and useful, and he knew that eventually he would cease to age altogether. As the room was the opposite of the one he had often confined himself to on St. John, Plagueis no longer looked like the wide-eyed mystic that he had seen so many months earlier. Except for having to wear the weaving device, he struck Palpatine as a slightly older version of the man who had visited him on the booth so many decades prior. Wary of approaching the corpse of his former master, he called upon the Force to roll the aged man over onto his back. From that ankle, Plagueis looked up almost as he had when Sidious first met him, decades earlier. Smooth, hairless cranium, humped nose, with its bridge flattened, as if from a shock ball blow, with its sharp tip pressed almost to its upper lip, jutting lower jaw, sunken eyes, brimming with menace, a physical characteristic rarely encountered in a man, but then Plagueis had never been an ordinary man, or an ordinary being of any sort. Sidious took care, still reaching out with the force on closer inspection, he saw that Plagueis' already cyanotic flesh was smoothing out, his features relaxing. Faintly aware of the whir of air, scrubbers, and the sounds of the outside world infiltrating the luxurious suite, he continued the vigil. Then, in relief, he pulled himself up to his full height and let out a breath. This was no Sith trick, not an instance of feigning death, but one of succumbing to its cold embrace. The being who had guided him to power was gone. Wry amusement narrowed his eyes. The man might have lived for another hundred years unchanged. He might have lived forever if he had successfully fully his, in his quest. But in the end, though he could save others from death, he had failed to save himself. What an end to this character. Plagueis' entire last work was dedicated to the midichlorians, and in the end, midichlorians were ultimately what got him killed. His studies, years, decades of studies into the depths of midichlorians and the manipulation of Essence life. Plagueis, and until he died, with all the knowledge he had acquired, all the mastery over midichlorians, to his own apprentice, deception, Plagueis could only be killed by someone he thought would never, ever betray him. He thought he and Sidious were going to be the last preeminent Sith Lords, but after Sidious heard of the Chosen One, he knew Plagueis had to be disposed of. 
So, my friends, what did you think of this? Acolytes of the Force. I hope that you decide to enter our archives once again. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and manipulate the like button into turning black. Goodbye, my friends. I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. And remember, kneel before the dragon of Zakul. Greetings, scholars of the dark side, and welcome back. I have been expecting you. Today, we're going to be exploring and revolving about, by far, the most interesting and unique Star Wars show that is coming out in the coming years, that of The Acolyte. The Acolyte, of course, being the first Sith-led show told from a Sith's point of view in all of Star Wars lore. The Sith actually lead this show, but there is something very interesting that was recently said in a quote by the actual lead of this show. Which, in an interview, the lead of the show stated this, this will be the first Sith Lord series. I can also tease this as a prequel, set about 100 years before the prequel movies. She also goes on to say this. The series is also sort of an explanation of how the Sith infiltrated the Jedi. It's a Sith Lord story that has never been done before. Something I would like to note is that how she said infiltrated the Jedi. Mainly Darth Plagueis, Darth Tenebrous and Darth Sidious all infiltrated the Senate with Plagueis using machinations and schemes behind the scenes of Higo de Mars II, the leader of a large portion of the intergalactic banking clan, in order to further Sidious's political cause, allowing him to attain the rank of Supreme Chancellor before the Nutman was murdered the night prior. But there is one very interesting thing about this. Darth Plagueis in the Legends continuity was born between 121 and 147 BBY, and died in 32 BBY, the same year that Anakin Skywalker was discovered and Darth Maul was thrown down in Naboo. D Plagueis was an exceptionally powerful Sith, but there is one thing. Plagueis was a moon. A moon can live up to the age of 100, and due to his political status, Plagueis certainly had an above average lifestyle. Plagueis lived to about the age of 115, as it has been estimated by various Star Wars historians, meaning that if Lucasfilm plays their cards right, Plagueis could appear in the new Acolyte TV show. However, this is purely speculation and not something that I believe is likely going to happen. But, nevertheless, it is a possibility, and I truly believe that it is something very important that we all need to see. The arrival of Darth Plagueis would redeem Lucasfilm for their past quote-unquote failures in Star Wars, such as the sequel trilogy, which was not as highly received by Star Wars fans. Anyway, my friends, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Greetings, friends, curious acolytes of the galaxy, students of our vast temple, and welcome back. I have been expecting you. You have arrived at the perfect moment. We have just recently excavated the ancient location of the death and demise location of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Known publicly as Higo Damask, Darth Plagueis the Wise was a legendary Dark Lord Mun Sith Lord who was a critical and vital member of the intergalactic banking clan, who was later referenced by Darth Sidious when attempting and goading Anakin Skywalker in the final steps into the dark side. Stating that Darth Plagueis was a Sith Lord so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the Midichlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying, a concept that greatly intrigued the young Anakin Skywalker. He was remembered as Darth Plagueis the Wise, was a powerful Dark Lord of the Sith, hailing from the planet Mygito. Damask was born between 147 and 120 BBY to a female and male man. His mother discovered his sensitivity to the Force and gave him away to the Bith Sith Lord Darth Tenebris, the current reigning Dark Lord of the Sith, who trained Damask, now Plagueis, in the ways of the Sith and the Dark Side. The apprentice later murdered Tenebris by influencing and using the Force on the stalactites that were impaled into the ceiling in order to dislodge his respirator, causing the death of Tenebris. Ascension to the Sith Lord was inevitable after the death of his master and snapping his neck. Plagueis, acting as the leader of Damask Holdings, a financial corporation, 
manipulated Galactic Affairs and Corporations to advance the Sith agenda and the Galactic Republic's fall, hiding in plain sight between some of the most powerful Jedi, such as Grandmaster Yoga, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and many, many others. He, while manipulating the planet Naboo, he discovered Palpatine, a man with a desire to rule and become a politician, a young Emperor Sheev Palpatine. Plagueis manipulated the boy to kill his family, which led the young man to accept Plagueis' Sith training and become the next Dark Lord. The Master and Apprentice continued the Sith agenda together, with Palpatine saving his master from a multitude of assassination attempts. However, Palpatine, now teaching the Zavak Sith Apprentice Darth Maul, wished to kill his master and rule the Republic alone, not wanting any challenges to his power. He, so, he's celebrating the manipulating senators and bureaucrats of the Republic, by succeeding in voting Palpatine as the new Supreme Chancellor. Palpatine intoxicated Plagueis with solace and wine, causing him to die to forced lightning in 32 BBY while the months slept. But, well, how did Plagueis die if Plagueis was so immensely powerful? How did Darth Plagueis, in all his immense power, die? We've already made a video about how powerful Darth Plagueis was and how he died. So, if you wish to check that out, I highly suggest it. It's truly one of our greatest pieces of content that we have uploaded. And I truly love Darth Plagueis and everything about him. But why did this nearly century-old man Sith will not defend himself? Well, today, we have the answer to that question. We must journey back to 52 BBY, 20 years before his death, where Plagueis was nearly assassinated. A quote goes with this from the Darth Plagueis novel, a Legends novel that is personally my favourite novel in all of Star Wars. Master, we need to leave at once. What I felt, the Jedi may have felt, and they may come. Let them. Let them inhale the aroma of the dark side. This carnage is beyond explanation. We can't be here. Recall the Sun Guard. When they're done here, no. I know when the Grand are. It won't be business as usual this time, Master. In 52 BBY, Plagueis attended La Shield's Order of Canting Circle. Many influential beings attended this event, which also attended the gathering, including many Muns from Damask Holdings and the IGBC La Shield, which was standing at the end of the circle, wore black robes, which ten other Muns also did. The initiation ceremony would begin with the high official joining Hill on the circle hymn, and placing around his neck the Order's signature pendant. That ceremony was offered to Plagueis 20 years prior, but Damask rejected it in fear that it would expose his Sith agenda. The event's aims were narrow, and the rituals were allegatorial, filled with secret phrases and handshakes, though Plagueis understood the need to instill members with some furtive fraternity. He did not risk having the high officials know much about his past, as it could unravel his secret identity and his overlying schemes of the Sith. Last Hill's past had been exhaustingly shared, even the decades he had worked with Car de Mars. As Plagueis had just returned from his short hollow transmission with his apprentice Insidious, Plagueis was filled with triumph. The Sun Guards and the event were leading to kill the Grand Procurator Kate. As members of the Canted Circle entered the building, chatting with others, 11 4D rotated his head towards Plagueis to alarm him of danger. Without warning, the high official presiding over the ceremony gave a downward tug to Hill's pendant severing his throat and head. As Hill died, several other officials and members thrust off their cloaks, revealing their true identities as Molodin assassins, some immensely dangerous assassins. These assassins began to throw dozens of decapitated discs, cutting down numerous mums and decapitating them within seconds, instantaneously even. 11 4D and Plagueis were both badly wounded by this erupt attack, with one disc severing Plagueis' trachea and blood vessels on the side of his throat causing him to adopt a sort of respirator that reminded him a lot of Darth Maul. He used the force to clamp the wound shut and prevent unconsciousness and blood loss before beginning to attack the Moldolans with the force. Simultaneously, Saint Prestige informed Palpatine that a Moldolan faction had accepted a contract by the Grand Proctor Orcrate to carry out a major contract on Coruscant involving someone of Damask Holdings, realising their target and schemes. Palpatine and the press starred, swiftly made his way to the Order of the Canted Circle's location, where a heavily wounded and dying Plagueis was lashing out with the full fury of his dark side knowledge against his attackers. The two managed to defeat the assassins and save Plagueis' life in the end. When Plagueis ordered Palpatine to call the Sun Guard, 
Palpatine denied this request and told him he knew who had ordered this attack and that he would deal with it personally. Darth Plagueis had survived the Maldalore attack with grievous injuries. A considerable part of his lower face had been taken off by a decapitated disc that had also severed his treasure and several blood vessels. In order to survive, the Dark Lord had been condemned to wear a type of transpirator and respirator, which covered his face below the nose. One standard month after the attack, Plagueis summoned Sidious to Abora to reveal the true nature of his studies and experiments to his apprentice for the next two decades. Damas lived an eremitic life in his laboratory, devoting all of his energy to the study of the Midichlorians, while Palpatine devoted himself to the political machinations and schemes that the last stages of the Grand Plan entailed. Additionally, Sidious began training his own apprentice, the Zabrak male Darth Maul, under Plagueis' watchful eye. The Mun found the Zathamirian Zabrak to be useful to the Sith, since he had been brought into Sidious' hands by his mother at the baby. That signature moment, where the decapitated disc had severed Plagueis' mouth and forced him to wear a breathing respirator, is the moment we need to turn over to now, as we venture into the tragedy and death of Darth Plagueis the Wise. The quote goes as follows, with Sidious on Plagueis' career. Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we, you useless old fool? It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis, who came to Naboo, determined to suck the planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Higo Damask as Plagueis, who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man and, with meticulous skill, manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide, fratricide. Darth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge but withholding his most powerful secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as a means of controlling him, instilling himself and sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the dark side. It was Plagueis, who criticised the early efforts of his apprentice, and who once choked him in demonstration of his superiority. Plagueis, who denigrated him in private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kim, and yet who allowed himself to be tricked by the Grand and killed m by mercenaries. Plagueis, who turned away from the Grand Plan to focus entirely on himself in an egotistical quest for immortality. Giving the Sun Guard the night off due to Sidious's attainment of the Chancellor position, Plagueis retired with Palpatine in 114D to his penthouse suite, where in celebration, Plagueis and his apprentice drank Soliston wine. Sidious complimented Plagueis on his part of the plan, and orchestrating essentially the entirety of the events that culminated in this moment, and told him he would endeavour to live up to Plagueis' expectations and wishes and fulfil his responsibility as a Dark Lord. Sidious rehearsed the speech he would give the next day to the Senate after he was elected Chancellor, Damascus request multiple times, saying that the Republic had been intact for millennia thanks to largely invisible beings whose accomplishments needed to be brought to the light of day, such as Higo Damas II. Actually, Plagueis, as the night continued to wane, Palpatine amended and corrected his speech, with Plagueis' critique while drinking more and more wine, intentionally intoxicating Plagueis with the Solaston foodstuff. Although Plagueis attempted to stop drinking, his apprentice did not let him, forcing the mud to intoxicate himself to a point in which he started to sleep. While Plagueis was asleep, the human from Naboo threw force lightning at his master, barrage after barrage of light blue veins which woke up the man. While mocking Damas, Sidious threw more and more lightning at the Sith Lord, decimating his breathing device and making Plagueis suffocate. This is the moment I want to highlight right here. If Plagueis had not attained his breathing device in that Moldian assassination attack two decades prior, he would not have died. Darth Plagueis was exceptionally powerful and was just purely focusing on not dying at this point. However, he certainly would have had some counter to Force Lightning. However, because of the Moldian attack dislodging his respirator, he could not even muster a single breath. Right now, all he cared about was not dying. And slowly, agonizingly, he was dying. He needed to breathe in order to conjure the Force, or soon he would inevitably die with all his power and all his wisdom. And despite the fact Plagueis had denied his death, he feared it could happen, and attempted to stand up and fight. However, he toppled onto his couch thanks to his intoxication and drunkenness. He was slowly killed by Sidious' tangle of Force Lightning, causing his master's death to be utterly agonising, eventually suffocating and losing his life one that he believed would never lose with his midichlorian studies, dying right on the cusp of discovering the secret to eternal life. Plagueis' body released an expulsion of dark side energy that could be heard as a ripple throughout Coruscant and knocked out Sidious Cole. 
Plagueis' body did not dissolve, however, and was left behind. His corpse of the Munsith Lord that Palpatine had, had trained him in the ways of politics and the ways of the dark side, finally ridded of life. Well, my friend, what did you think of this unique fact? Did you agree with my speculation? Plagueis would not have died if that one assassination attempt had not have decapitated his lower jaw. He ended up a very Darth Malik-like being, with Darth Malik ultimately ending up with half of his jaw severed after a brutal duel with his own master in Darth Revan during the tenure of Sith Lords. In the end, Plagueis' own fear of death got the better of him. He got cocky. He believed that his apprentice would never betray him, but the dark side called out to Sidious right as he was at the doorway. Sidious had originally planned to not kill Plagueis and to have him rule as his side, seeing him as a very powerful and potential ally. However, in the end, the dark side beckoned out to the y young Sith Lord and soon to be Chancellor, telling him to kill Plagueis. Well, my friends, what did you think of this video? Are you enjoying the content we are releasing? Darth Plagueis is a truly enigmatic and mysterious Sith that I hope to cover more on the channel in the future, including planning a lore compilation on him, which I'll release soon. Goodbye, my friends, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Darth Plagueis had the innate ability to manipulate, control, and control the midichlorians, microscopic life forms who serve as the intermediaries and boundaries between living sentient organisms and the living and cosmic force itself, providing force attunement and force sensitivity to all beings. Now, what is the complete opposite of preserving one's life? Darth Plagueis' entire work was into the study of the midichlorians, with his eventual goal becoming a Sith Force God, an embodiment of the dark side like ancient famed Sith of old, such as Darth Nihilus and Darth Vitiate. Darth Nihilus is actually partially the subject of today's video, as Darth Plagueis attempted to preserve his life and continuously resurrect himself and never, ever die by manipulating the midichlorians to sustain his life and he partially succeeded, succeeding in resurrecting others, but never learned this ability in order to save oneself. He could only save the ones he cared about from the inevitable fate of death, old age, and dying in battle. However, there is one Sith Lord who is the direct counterpart to Pegasus' ideology and his entire life studies, that being Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger, was a force wound who was so powerful he needed to feed on entire planets just to stay alive, gorging himself on force energies in order to become an exceptionally powerful entity, more akin to the Sun or Abeloth rather than a normal Sith Lord. Nihilus surpassed any Sith in history due to his power, surpassing Vitiate, Sidious, simply due to his hack's abilities with force drain. His force drain technique was so he could drain entire planets, and Darth Traer even admitted that he could potentially even become one of the most powerful beings in all of galactic history, entities included, and imagined him becoming a threat to the entire galaxy. One thing that interests me is, would Darth Plagueis, if he had mastered his ability of life after death, and being able to transfer his consciousness in essence transfer, and use the midichlorians to manipulate him sustain his organisms and his entire life. What would Darth Nihilus' not only reaction be, but how would he fare against it? Would Darth Plagueis' hacks techniques finally be the thing to put down the dog of the Lord of Hunger? Well, my friends, today we'll be briefly touching on that, starting right now. Ready? Let's excavate this new tomb. In Star Wars, it is a common misconception that Darth Nihilus could drain the life of any being. Beings such as Grandmaster Otar and Satil Shan could resist his force drain. Also, Darth Vader had the ability could. Without force drain, Darth Nihilus was not very powerful and was pretty much an average Sith Lord with some very good and powerful alchemic techniques. 
If Plagueis had mastered his ability truly to manipulate and control the midichlorians, bending them to his will in order to sustain and further his life, I believe Plagueis would eventually still die. Nihilus was just too proficient in force drain, and unless Plagueis could resurrect himself, Plagueis could not call upon his midichlorians in time. In order to kill Nihilus, he would simply just vanish. As a lifeless husk, his spirit carried off into the darkness, never to return carried off into the netherworld of the Force, in crying out as the echoes from oblivion. Be sure to ascend to the rank of Master by striking down the subscribe button, and fulfil your destiny by switching on the notification bell to get notified for any Star Wars videos. Goodbye my friends, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Would Darth Sidious be able to defeat his master in Darth Plagueis? The rule of two clearly delegates that the Sith must grow stronger each generation by betraying and maiming their masters and killing them in very brutal and unorthodox methods. None is more extreme than Darth Sidious killing his master while he was sleeping by dislodging his respirator, while Plagueis desperately tried to summon his midichlorians. So, here is a shorter video on what would occur if Palpatine openly challenged Plagueis to a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. In short, I think if these two ever had an all out duel, Plagueis would be ready. Plagueis was a master of lightsaber combat, although not as much as his apprentice, as Sidious had mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat, he still was able to brutally batter down the defences of Venomous, the replacement apprentice of Darth Tenebris, and this was even before his prime and manipulation of Mimiglorians, and he was prepared to kill his own apprentice to protect his own life. Plagueis would have won in most one-on-one -on -one scenarios, using his superior mastery of the Force during this scenario. Be mindful, this is only Sidious at the time of the Phantom Menace, as he obviously grew tremendously in power during the time of the Phantom Menace, Revenge of the Sith, and Return of the Jedi. The one main exception I can think off the top of my head is a scenario where Sidious uses telekinesis to destroy Plagueis' life support transpirator and respirator mask. Early in the duel, the Mun was forced to wear this 20 years before his death due to being hunted down and nearly killed by assassins under the guise of Hugo de Mars. To quote some sentences from Plagueis' death scene depicted in his novel, one of the greatest novels to ever be written, which in he was devoid of his mask by Sidious' force lightning a vain ambush, and heavily intoxicated by Solston wine. Sidious peered at Plagueis through the Force. Oh yes, by all means, gather your midichlorians, Plagueis. He held his thumb and forefinger close together. Try to keep yourself alive while I choke the life out of you. Plagueis gulped for air and lifted an arm towards him. There's the rub, you see, Sidious said in a physiological tone. All the ones you experimented on, killed and brought back to life. They were little more than toys. Now, though, you get to experience it from their side, and look what you discover. In a body that is being denied air, in which even the force is failing, your own midichlorians can't accomplish what you're asking of them. Hatred stained Sidious's eyes. I could save you, of course, but I'll do no such thing. The idea here is not to drag you back at the last moment, but to bring you to death's door and shove you through to the other side. Sidious sighed. A tragedy, really, for one so wise, one who could oversee the lives and deaths of all beings, except himself. The section of the scene is very telling and climactic. Up to that point, Plagueis had used his command over midichlorians to promote healing in his cells and prevent him from aging, to the point where he could slow down his wounds to the, nearly to a standstill. But during those experimentations, his own body wasn't being deprived of something essential for his own midichlorians to survive, oxygen. And so we learn in his death scene that even if he was ordering the microscopic intermediaries that connected his flesh to the mystical energy field to promote healing in his body against Sidious attacks, his midichlorians could not do as he commanded if the oxygen that fed his cells wasn't there. For now, I say if Sidious were to rid Plagueis of his mask quickly in the duel, outlasting the semi-immortal Mun would get much easier for him. But if he failed in that quick event, then I believe Plagueis would have the upper hand in any other duel. Goodbye, my friends. I'll see you in the galaxy far, far away. You ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It is during this time in the Senate chambers that Palpatine recites and recalls the story and fate of his own Sith Master to the young manipulated chosen one, Anakin Skywalker, who he hopes to corrupt to the dark side. Darth Plagueis was one of the most powerful Sith Lords in modern Star Wars, Widely considered to be in or among the top ten most powerful Sith Lords of all time, 
surpassing beings such as Malgus, Darth Vader, and many other beings. Darth Plagueis trained for perfection Darth Sidious, the culmination of the rule of two line established by Darth Bane. One of the most old and powerful Sith Lords, Plagueis' story spans an entire century, one of the only Sith to ever reach that age alongside Palpatine, Vitiate, and Marco Ragnos, and many other Sith Lords of old. Greeting, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. I have been expecting you. Today, we are going to be recording Darth Plagueis' most powerful abilities and force attunement. His force attunement was such it was stated to be just below that of Grandmaster Yoda, the supreme avatar of the light and the Grandmaster of the Jedi Order before the rise of Luke Skywalker. Darth Plagueis was a month Sith Lord that was born between 147 and 120 BBY on my he has lived for roughly a century and could have even surpassed this, however, due to the dates and chronological timelines are rusty. In Star Wars lore, Plagueis trained to perfection Darth Sidious. So, as we know, Sidious's tremendous power and affinity for the dark side clearly surpassed almost any other being in galactic history. What was the strength and iron will of his master? What power did Plagueis possess compared to Sidious, and could he beat him in an altercation? Are you ready, my friends? Let's begin delving into the complete power of Darth Plagueis the Wise. With the Force, Plagueis was able to directly manipulate the essence of life itself, a power Palpatine believed was directly tied to his inward sight. Plagueis eventually extended this ability and molded it to the form where he could save others from death and, when his power was applied to the extreme, he could create new life organisms and forms from the midichlorian found in all life forms. Another extreme example of this technique's application is how it could be used to raise the dead back to life. As shown when it was used against Darth Venomous, for some context, Darth Venomous was the secret Sith apprentice that Darth Tenebrous took under his wing after establishing and concluding that Plagueis would never rise up to defeat him. Plagueis killed Darth Venomous multiple times and resurrected him many times in 42 BBY, 10 years before his death. Plagueis also discovered the ability to retain one's identity in the Force while becoming one with it, an ability that Luke Skywalker would later learn. But in this manner, a surviving death did not appeal to him, as he was not concerned with the non-material world and wanted to exist as an eternal Sith God that would never be overthrown. Plagueis was extremely proficient in the light of lightsaber combat, and although he disdained using his blade in combat, believing like his master Darth Tenebrous and his Padawan Darth Sidious, that while you did not need to be a superior to every Jedi in the Order in the art of blade work, it would be good if you could, as it would be easier to defeat them and toy with them in an altercation. He was very skilled with it, regarding lightsaber duels as tedious affairs. Tenebrous views his apprentice as a master and pioneer of the art, specialising in parts of Form 6 Nyman, Form 7 Juyo, and possibly aspects of Form 3 Sarisu. He was able to run in a blitz of speed so fast during his duel with Darth Venomous that an onlooker would have thought him as a thunderbolt racing through the trees. Skilled in the more unorthodox, ethereal, and cryptic applications of the Force, he was skilled in conjuring Force illusions, convincing enough to fool the immense powerful Darth Sidious, the most powerful Sith Lord of his age and beyond. Plagueis was also an extremely capable combatant, being able to absorb a countless barrage of blaster bolts, then channeling it into his Force Lightning, an ability he was also very skilled in. However, his proficiency in Force Lightning would never rise to be as skilled and potent as his apprentices in Sidious. While fighting his assassins, Plagueis was able to use a heart study technique to keep two of his three hearts from failing. For some more context, Muns, the location that Plagueis and species he was a part of, were typically born with three hearts, allowing them to live for exceptionally long lives. Similarly to this, Dathomiri and Zabrax, like Darth Maul, were born with two hearts, making them extremely difficult to kill, and it was the reason Darth Maul survived his confrontation with Obi-Wan and Naboo. He was able to atomize six of his assailants at once, and con conjuring up a force wave so powerful, and bring it around to atomize a few more. His force bellow was as powerful as any sonic weapon, 
and blaster, and he was able to turn any object into a deadly projectile with just a clap of his hands. Similarly to the technique Avaloth employed during her siege of Coruscant, where she destroyed buildings and sought pieces of glass and weapons out to impale and kill other beings. He apparently was also capable of convection and or pyrokinesis, pyrokinesis being the ability of manipulating fire or flame, as he was able to melt snowflakes before they reached his person on Mygito. Although Plagueis lost his tremendous foresight ability after Tenebris died at his hands, the power seemed to reappear a day before Tenebris' murder, as demonstrated when he had received a vision of the Battle of Bendemic. Later, days before his own death, he glimpsed the surrounding Darth Maul and Anakin Skywalker respectively. Plagueis also believed to have protected the art of Sith alchemy. With the entire knowledge of the rule of two at his fingertips, there was little Plagueis did not know about ancient Sith lore. Additionally, he was aware of some of the more obscure and cryptic techniques of the Jedi Order, such as Emerald Lightning, a non-lethal variation of Force Lightning employed by Luke Skywalker, also known as Electric Judgment employed by Plo Koon. He also utilized the Sever Force ability, the same ability that could strip a Jedi or Sith from their connection to the Force momentarily, and prolonged exposure could kill the midichlorians inside them entirely. He was not known to use these powers himself. Beyond his forced powers and abilities, he was also a canny manipulator of others and was skilled at the management of his business and the other responsibilities of the life he led a part of his role as a Sith. Plagueis possessed tremendous political power in the galaxy, being the head of the Damask Holdings, which was a fragment of the intergalactic banking clan which controlled a lot of the galaxy's own funds. Plagueis had the ability to cut a planet's funds off and money at will, and due to his high status as Higo Damas, the leader of the international banking clan, or at least a large portion of it, he was able to manipulate beings into doing what he wanted by threatening their homeworlds and things they held dear, due to the fact that Plagueis learned that money, while a valuable tool, was nowhere compared to the power of the Force. Well, my friend, what did you think of this breakdown on the true power of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Darth Plagueis is truly one of my favourite characters in all of Star Wars, and one of the greatest Sith Lords ever. Be sure to tune in in roughly a week, where I upload a premiere video detailing Exar Kun and Ulit Keldroma versus Revan and Malik from the Old Republic era, depicting their power and tremendous skill. Goodbye, Acolytes. I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. And I hope that you learn the ability to manipulate the midichlorians to save your loved ones from dying. Darth Sidious is unquestionably one of the most talented, proficient, devastatingly powerful, and dark side adept Sith Lords in the modern era of Star Wars. Darth Sidious is single-handedly dominated the Jedi, killed highly decorated Jedi masters in seconds, such as Kit Fisto, Aegon Cola, and Seisei Tin, gone on to stalemate Mace Windu until he was amped by Anakin Skywalker's fear, and go on to duel and contend in a force clash with Grandmaster Yoda, claimed by many to be the most powerful Jedi of all time until the rise of Luke Skywalker in the reconstituted Jedi Order and the New Republic era. Darth Sidious was adept in many dark side practices, such as alchemy, force lightning, force choke, which he implemented to torture, utterly brutalize, and subjugate his foes to an utter crippling and bitter end. However, there is one intriguing part of the Revenge of the Sith in the novelization and movie adaptation, where we can see Palpatine speaking to Anakin Skywalker within the vast and expansive Senate chambers, the same arena that he would later duel the Grand Master of the Jedi Order Yoda in with his crimson blade, the dark versus the light. During this meeting and conference, if you will, we see Anakin speaking to Palpatine, like a father would speak to his son, or a grandfather or uncle of that matter. During this time, Palpatine recounts the tale of his own Sith Master, beginning with enticing Anakin with more power, stating, Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Immediately intriguing Anakin. However, this got me thinking, how did Darth Plagueis, 
one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time. And in the top five most powerful Sith Lords in the Rule of Two era of Star Wars, how did he die in all his wisdom, in all his power, and manipulation of the Midichlorians? How did Darth Plagueis, the father of the culmination of the Rule of Two in Sidious, how did Darth Plagueis, Dark Lord of the Sith, finally perish? Well, my friends, today we will be exploring just that. Before we continue, I implore you, if you wish to stop the subscribe button's ravaging attack across the galaxy, use the force to obliterate the subscribe button, use your crimson blade, ignite it, and strike down the like button, and hit the notification bell if you wish to be notified for any daily uploads into our archives. Now, my friends, join us as we open this Sith holocron and uncover this lost bit of knowledge that has been lost to the ancient grass of the old masters, the death of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Our eyes drape over the scene, giving the sun guard the night off. Plagueis retired with Palpatine, and 11 4D to his penthouse suite, where in celebration, Plagueis and his Sith apprentice Palpatine, who had recently learned about the supposed Chosen One Anakin Skywalker being abducted into the Jedi Order as a mere slave boy from Tatooine, drank Sullustan wine, drunkening Plagueis and intoxicating him with the fumes. Sidious complimented Plagueis on his part of the plan and told him that he would endeavour to live up to Plagueis' expectations and fulfil his responsibility as being the culmination of the Rule of Two. Plagueis, however, possessed far too much trust in his apprentice and failed to acknowledge what this truly would mean. Sidious, in the Darth Plagueis novel depicting it, rehearsed the speech he would give the next day to the Senate after he was elected as the Supreme Chancellor at Damascus request several times, with Hugo Damask being the public name for Darth Plagueis, staying and saying that the Republic had been intact for a millennia thanks to the largely invisible beings whose accomplishments needed to be brought to the light of day and acknowledged finally, such as Hugo Damask II, Plagueis' own aliases. As the night wore on, Palpatine amended and corrected his speech with Plagueis' constant critique and manner while drinking more and more wine, beginning to intoxicate Plagueis and make him drunk with the Solstan foodstuff. Although Plagueis attempted to stop drinking, his apprentice did not let him, and Plagueis, perhaps one of the most iron-willed beings in the Star Wars galaxy, faltered, forcing the man to intoxicate himself and immerse himself to a point which he started to sleep before even drinking the next glass. While Plagueis was sleeping, sleeping for the first time in roughly 50 years, as he had been inspired by his Bith master scientist, Darth Tenebris, not to sleep at any cost, as he could be assassinated secretly. While Plagueis was asleep, the human from Naboo threw force lightning at his master, which began to woke up and startle the man, while mocking Damask, with him, with him stating this direct quote, Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we, you useless old fool? It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis who came to Naboo, determined to suck the planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man and with meticulous skill manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide and fratricide. Darth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge, but withholding his most powerful and potent secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as a means of controlling him, instilling in him within a sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the darkness. It was Darth Plagueis who criticised the early efforts of his apprentice, and who once choked him in demonstration of his own superiority. Plagueis, who denigrated him in a private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kim, and yet who allowed himself to be tricked by the Grand and nearly killed by mercenaries. Plagueis, who turned away from the Grand plan to focus entirely on himself in an egotistical quest for immortality. This was Sidious's direct quote and opinion on Darth Plagueis' own career as he go to Mars with his alias as Darth Sith and Plagueis. While mocking Damas, Sidious threw more and more force lightning at the Sith Lord, destroying and loosening his breathing apparatus, which he had used to sustain his life after severe injuries by assassins, and making Plagueis slowly suffocate. Although Plagueis had denied his death, he feared it could potentially happen, and attempted to stand up and fight. However, he fell on the couch thanks to intoxication from the drugs. 
He was slowly being killed by Sidious's vain tangle of force lightning, eventually suffocating and losing his life. One that he believed would never lose with his midichlorian manipulation and studies. Post his death, Darth Sidious would contain the remains of his own Sith Master within an urn that he kept in his Chancellor's office in his time and tenure as Supreme Chancellor. This office would later be visited by Anakin Skywalker multiple times. It is also important to note that Palpatine went out of his way to get his Master drunk. This could potentially allude to the fact that Palpatine was terrified of his Master, or at least worried that his power, even his prime, could overwhelm his own. As in my opinion, Plagueis at this time was more powerful than Palpatine. Plagueis was simply too wise. He had lived a roughly a century, 100 years, being born between 147 and 120 BBY, and dying in 32 BBY on Coruscant. Darth Plagueis truly lived the life of a Sith, and is one of my favourite Darksiders in all of Star Wars lore, not to mention, and certainly not uncounted, within the top 10 most powerful Sith of all time, training perhaps the most powerful Sith of all time. Darth Plagueis truly manipulated the galaxy, and was the father of the culmination of Darth Bane's lineage of the Rule of Two. Well, my friends, what did you think of this in-depth dive into the final death of Darth Plagueis the Wise, one of the most powerful, most intelligent, most cunning, and manipulative Sith Lords the galaxy has ever known? Darth Plagueis truly cemented his place in the galaxy. Later on, Luke Skywalker would inquire and wonder about Darth Plagueis and whether Palpatine truly told the truth about Darth Plagueis nearly achieving immortality and being able to resurrect those he loved from death. Well, my friends, this is where I bid you farewell. I hope that your starships are out of the range of any Imperial vessels. I hope you successfully navigate through the dense impact asteroid field. Goodbye, acolytes, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Plagueis, Dark Lord of the Sith, and Mun Sith Lord think of Darth Vishit. Darth Vishit was a Sith Lord unlike any before him, living 5,000 years before the events of the Battle of Yavin in 0 BBY. Darth Plagueis was a Mun Sith Lord taken under the wing of Darth Tenebris, his Sith Master, and one of the grandfather figures of the Rule of Two era after killing his unnamed Twi'lek Sith Master of the Bainite Sith. Darth Plagueis was unlike any Dark Lord that came before him, wanting to be a scientist and technological master, like his master, the Bith scientist Darth Tenebris, who I discussed briefly earlier on this list. 
Darth Tenterus like Plagueis passed on his studies to be a scientist to their Padawans, both Plagueis and Sidious respectively. Plagueis went on to develop an infancy and exceptional interest in the midichlorians, becoming obsessed in how he could manipulate life and possibly prolong death infinitely, believing that the rule of two would end with him and Palpatine. However, Plagueis once noted in the novelization of his book Darth Plagueis, one of the greatest Star Wars books and books of all time that I have ever read, that Darth Vitiate, he noted that had lived for over a thousand years, still met his eventual demise. This proved to Plagueis' theory that all Sith that sought to break the bonds of immortality and become an immortal entity to pro- forever torment the galaxy under the thrall of the dark side were looking in the right place, and Vitiate was the first person to ever come close to discovering this secret, making Vitiate one of Plagueis' idols, although he did agree that the rule of two Sith had to change and that Vitiate's teachings could no longer be accepted into their order. He still admired Vitiate and thought that he was one of the greatest Sith to ever live.